You may have heard the news recently about the underwater volcano that erupted off the coast of Tonga. Now, eruptions of this caliber happen every couple of years or so, but even still, you could see the eruption from space, and you could even supposedly hear it all the way from Alaska. Like, that's really far. But what I want to talk about are the tsunamis that the eruption created. Now, even though the eruption happened here, about 40 miles off the coast of Tonga, the effects of it could be felt in Australia, New Zealand, the Pacific Islands, Japan, and North and South America. Now, here in California, a tsunami advisory was sent out. But when the tsunami arrived, the biggest waves were only about two and a half feet. That doesn't sound very impressive, especially considering that waves typically get up to around four feet. And in the wedge in Newport Beach, for example, waves can sometimes get as high as 30 feet. And people will surf there. So what's going on? No one sent me a warning for 30-foot waves. Well, the difference between these two scenarios really comes down to the type of wave. There are really three main types of waves. Wind-driven waves, tidal waves, and tsunamis. Now, wind-driven waves, as you might have guessed, are caused by, well, the wind. As the turbulent wind pushes against the ocean's surface, it creates a disturbance that pushes the water, creating a wave that travels across the ocean. Now, tidal waves are waves caused by the sun and moon pulling on the oceans. The tides can move in and out as the position of the sun and moon and rotation of the earth changes. Now, just to clear any confusion, tidal waves are not the same as tsunamis. Tidal waves, just like the tides, are very predictable and they're usually benevolent and not harmful. But what's really interesting about waves is that the water doesn't really move. Rather, the waves move. As the energy of the wave comes by, the water moves up and then back down, ultimately not really changing position. But tsunamis are different. I think oftentimes when people think of a tsunami, they picture something like this. Or like this. But in reality, this just isn't the case. A tsunami is usually caused by something like an earthquake or a volcanic eruption, something that displaces a huge amount of water all at once. So there's still waves, but they're way more powerful since a bunch of water has just been suddenly pushed out of the way. This water pushes on the next water, and this water pushes on the next bit of water, which pushes on the next water, and so on. And the tsunami seems to get even more powerful as it reaches shallower water. As the wave travels towards the shore, all the wave's energy gets concentrated in this smaller volume, like forcing everything through a bottleneck. So when the wave arrives, sure, maybe it's only two and a half feet tall, but it is a two and a half foot wall of water barreling at you like a locomotive. It's just not gonna stop. Compare that to like a two foot normal wave and it's just gonna kinda gently lap on the shore. So seeing what happened in California being over 5,000 miles away, you can imagine the effects that it had on Tonga being just 40 miles away from the site of the volcano. And yeah, all of the homes on one of the islands were completely destroyed and the main undersea cable connecting Tonga to the rest of the world was severed, leaving Tonga temporarily cut off. I hope the damage on the other Tongan Islands and other Pacific Islands was minimal and that we can have a speedy recovery. Thank you all for watching, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.